Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Um, we're going to carry on doing circle geometry. I hope that you guys have been watching this series on circle geometry. And if you haven't, please feel free to go and click on the links of the previous days and you will be able to watch recordings of the lessons. Um, Guys, if you are doing the circle geometry with me and you are struggling with some of the questions, I really suggest that you go and re-watch the lesson and what you do is you stop at the beginning of the question and try the question by yourself and then move on. So for example, when you get to a question like this, before I start, I would sincerely suggest that you actually stop the video and try this for yourself and once you have done that we can you can move on again and see if you got it right okay so let's look at a couple of examples so basically what we're doing in the next few slides is we're going to be applying the knowledge that we have already gathered and we are going to be applying those theorems and I'm going to be also helping you to work out how to write the reasons for your answers because I find a lot of students find it very very easy to actually give their answers but not so easy to write the reasons down or they say it's oh it's just logical or it's obvious the problem is that the mark allocation is the usually one mark for the obvious answer and two marks for the reason so you really do need to write those reasons down so let's get started okay so what do we have we've got a a circle right we have a triangle inside the circle we notice that this is the diameter because it's going through the center o and what do we know about angles in semicircles we know that angles in semicircles are 90 degrees so we immediately know that that is 90 degrees there which is quite nice we also know that these lines are parallel and we've been given that this is 55 degrees and they want to know what is this angle there angle x okay so there are a couple ways to get there and there really isn't a right or wrong way in the sense that it doesn't matter if it takes you three steps or 20 steps to get there as long as your mathematical reasoning is true in other words you're not lying about it or you're making some jump or sweeping statement that is incorrect if it takes you six or seven or eight steps to get to the same answer that we may get to in three or vice versa nothing wrong with that at all it's how you find it okay it's how easy you find it okay so I personally see that that is 90 degrees and I'm going to state it. I'm going to say angle ACB equals 90 degrees. And why? Because it's angle in a semicircle. Okay, we all know that, that means that that's 90 degrees. Right, if that's the case, then do you agree that this angle here is also 90 degrees because they're corresponding because AC is parallel to OD, right? And why do I want to get that? Well, because I've got this little angle here at 55 degrees. So I'm aiming to get something that's going to be able to relate these angles with that X over there. So I'm going to say that angle ODB, ODB is also 90 degrees. Why? It's corresponding. And why? Because AC is parallel to OD. AC is parallel to OD. So now we've got this is 90 degrees and that is 55 degrees. Now there is a rule that you guys should know that says the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two interior opposite angles okay so if you look here you can see that that there OBD is a triangle this is the exterior angle and these are the interior opposite angles therefore I can say angle X is equal to 90 degrees plus 55 degrees which equals 145 degrees and why because the exterior angle equals the sum of the two interior opposite angles. And like I've mentioned before, 
grade 12s, it doesn't matter if you write this out beautifully in four words. Okay, I'm very happy for you to do that. I'm writing it in shortcut because we tend to write these things in shortcut. It's not a problem. Okay, and it's how it's going to be seen on the memo. But if you want to write it as in the exterior angle is equal, sorry, is equal to the, okay, dot, 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 I'm not doing it. That's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But I will be using the shortcuts and so will your teacher and so will most of the memos. So just be aware that that's how you can write it. Right, let's look at this example. As I've mentioned before, normally if I'd be teaching this to you in a class or in a different type of setup, I would give you some time to try this question for yourselves and then go through it, okay? But in this case, you guys, are, obviously I'm working a little bit slowly, so you guys will probably have time to be a bit ahead of me. But also what you need to realize is that Sorry, I'm just looking at it. Sorry, I got distracted by looking at it. Is the fact that um, you guys could actually watch this video again and like I said, stop it at the beginning and then try this question for yourself. Okay, so we've got lines going from the center of the circle down to this cord here. Okay, we also have a line going from the center of the circle down to this cord here. We're told that angle C is 50 degrees and angle A is 60 degrees. Okay, so before I do anything, okay, I will see that X is not subtended by anything on the circumference. There's none of this angle to center is twice the angle of circumference thing. I can't do that, right? But I can get angle B because I've been given a, which is 60 degrees. I've been given C, which is 50 degrees. So do you agree I can get B? Because all three angles of the triangle have to add up to 180 degrees, right? So I can say angle ABC. ABC is equal to 180 degrees minus 60 plus 50 degrees, degrees. And why is that? That's because of angle sum of triangle. Now grade 12s, I don't have much space on my PowerPoint, so that's why I tend to write these things all squished up. You guys have got plenty of space. You can make space, okay? You can write below it nice and neatly. So I don't want to see anything like that on your page. You write it next to the reason there's next to it and it's nice and neat. Okay, so this becomes 180 degrees minus 110 degrees, which is 70 degrees. So this angle is 70 degrees. Okay, and now you might be feeling well a little bit lost because now we have just got lines that are equal. But now you need to go back to the very first theorem that we got taught, which was that if, it might have been the second theorem, but anyway, if you take a line and you drop it down from the center of the circle so that it bisects that chord, what is special about these angles? They are 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and it's called the midpoint theorem. Okay, because what you're doing is you're taking this and you're dropping it down to the center of this chord, and then that angle is 90 degrees, and it is definitely one of the first, either the first or second theorem that we went through. Right, and that's what we're gonna use. Yeah, we've got a line going from the center of the circle onto the midpoint of the chord, and we know that this is the midpoint because I've got this line here that shows that this is equal to this, which means that this angle here is 90 degrees. Similarly, you have this line here coming from the center of the circle down to chord so that it splits the chord equally. So this is 90 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to label these. It's going to be A, B, C, let's call this D, and let's call this E. So I'm going to say that angle ODB equals 90 degrees, um, and I would say the midpoint theorem, or you can write it out, and I can say that also equals OEC sorry, OEB, angle O, 
E, B, same reason. Okay, so now you can see you've got a 90 degree, a 70 degree, and a 90 degree, and you just need to get the X. And this is a quad. It's not a cyclic quad. It doesn't have to be, because if you think about it, the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees, right? So that those three angles have to add up to 180 degrees. If I add another triangle to it, those angles also have to add up to 180 degrees. So all four angles have to add up to 180 plus 180, which is 360 degrees. So even though this is nothing fancy like a cyclic quad, we know that all four of these angles have to add up to 360 degrees. Therefore, we can say that X, angle X, is going to be 360 degrees minus 90 plus 90 plus 70, which is going to be 360 degrees minus and there's an easy way to do this. 90 and 90 is 180, so you get 180 minus 70 degrees, which is going to be 110 degrees. So X happens to be 110 degrees, hmm, which is interesting because then it actually proves that this is a cyclic quad because opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary, but that's beside the point. And your reasoning will be the interior angle of a quad equals 360 degrees. Okay, right, so that was a nice question. Let's look at another one. Okay, so again, we've got some lines, we've got some parallel lines, we have a center of the circle, it's not related to anything. Okay, so we've got points A, B, C, and D on the circumference, which means that A, B, C, and D is a cyclic quad, right? We also have that AD is parallel to BC and AB is parallel to EC. So do you agree that means that we actually have a parallelogram here? We've got this, this here, AE, B and C. That's a parallelogram. That's a parallelogram. Why? Because we've got two pairs of opposite sides parallel, okay? We also have a cyclic quad, yeah, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And we're told that this angle here is 70 degrees and they want X. Okay, so since ABCD is a cyclic quad and this is a parallelogram, we want to somehow get our angles or some angles into this parallelogram because then maybe we can use some of the properties of a parallelogram to work out X. Okay, so let's think about that. What do we know about opposite angles of a cyclic quad? Opposite angles of a cyclic quad. Quad. What do we know about them? Okay, they are supplementary. Opposite angles of a, quad, a cyclic quad are supplementary. It's a rule. So therefore, we know that this is 110 degrees. Okay, that's quite nice. So we can say that angle A, B, C equals 110 degrees. Why? Opposite angles of a cyclic quad. You don't even have to say they're equal. It's made, it's obvious from the fact that we've said this. Okay, so that's 110 degrees. Okay, now we need to get to X. Now there are a couple ways we can get to X and like I've stated before, it doesn't matter which route you take to get to X as long as you get there. Okay, so you could maybe take six steps to get to X or you could take two steps. As long as you're mathematically correct, it's not a problem. Okay, so what I'm going to say is, well, we know that this is a parallelogram. Opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal. Okay, therefore angle AEC, angle AEC is equal to 
110 degrees. Why? Because opposite angles of a palm are equal. Okay, so therefore this is 110 degrees. So could we get X? Yes, we can, because that is, I feel I sound like Bob the Builder. Anyway, can we, yes, we can, it's because this is a straight line. All the angles in the straight line add up to 180 degrees. So do you agree that angle A, E, D equals 180 degrees because it's a straight line? You actually didn't have to write that line down. But you can say that angle X is equal to 70 degrees. Why? Because it's supplementary. Supplementary. And why is it supplementary? Because it is on line A, E, D. So therefore, this is 70 degrees, which is quite nice because then you can say, well, if we're building this further, that meant that this was equal to this because these are base angles and obviously if an isosceles triangle and that is equal to that and then you can just have fun. Right, so that was a nice question. Ah, something interesting. Okay, so again, we've got a cyclic quote. We've got A, I don't know what that is, just ignore it, but A, B, C, and D is a cyclic quad, okay? We've got 65 over here. We have 25 at this random point where A, B is extended to E and D, C is extended to E and they meet up and they form an angle 25 degrees and they want X. And again, remember that this quest, these questions are testing your knowledge on what we've learned so far. And what have we learned so far about cyclic quads. We have learned cyclic quads that opposite angles of a cyclic quad are equal. We've also learned that the exterior angle equals the interior opposite angle. The exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite angle. So there are two ways we can go about this. We can either go, well, if this is 65 degrees, then we can say, sorry, they're not equal. They are supplementary. Sorry, sorry. They're supplementary. So if this is 65 degrees, we can go well, 180 minus 65. We can get that angle. Then we could get this angle. A better job is to use this, where opposite angles, I mean, sorry, where exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite angle. So since we've got that this is 65 degrees, do you agree we can say that that is 65 degrees? Because that is the exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite angle. So we can say angle BCE is equal to 65 degrees. Why? Exterior angle equals int up angle. Okay, so that's 65 degrees there. That's 65. We want X. Now, there are two ways we can get X. We can either add these up and then subtract from 180 and get that. Then you're on a straight line. You subtract that from 180 and you get that. Or we can use the rule we've just used before where we know that the exterior angle of the triangle equals the sum of the two interior opposite angles, right? So we can say X is equal to 65 degrees plus 25 degrees. Why? The exterior angle equals the sum of the two int up angles. So that would be 90 degrees. Okay, happy with that. Right, let's look at this example. This is quite scary. We've got a parallel line here and a parallel line here. Okay, and it looks quite scary because it's A, B, C, D, E, F. So you're thinking, whoa, that's multiple points, okay? But if you look slightly more carefully, you can realize that actually there are two cyclic quads in here. Okay, there's one here, A, B, C, and D. That's one cyclic quad, right? There's another cyclic quad sitting right opposite it, which is A, F, E, and D. And we're again going to use the properties of cyclic quads to work this out. 
Okay, so we've got that this is 150 degrees and we know that opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary, right? So if this is C and this is 150 degrees, where is its opposite angle? Its opposite angle is this little angle here. And the opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary, so therefore this is 30 degrees here. Do you agree? So let's write that out. We can say angle BAD equals 30 degrees. Why? Opposite angle of cyclic angles. Cyclic quad are supplementary. Right. Now we're also told that this is parallel to this. So we can see that there's actually a pretty Z shape going on here. Okay, that's alternate. So if, if this is 30 degrees, it means that that is 30 degrees because they're all alternate. So we can say that angle DAE, DAE equals 30 degrees. Why? It's alternate because AB is parallel to ED. And it's always good to tell them which lines we are talking about that are parallel because you might have multiple parallel lines in the diagram. And now we're looking at this cyclic quad, A, F, E, and D. And I know I've scribbled all over in green, so let's just change the color of the second cyclic quad now. And let's make it purple. So we're looking at this cyclic quad here. Okay, and if you're looking at that cyclic quad, you know that this angle here is 30 degrees. Again, we know that opposite angles of cyclic quad are supplementary. And this is the opposite angle, which means this has to be 150 degrees again. So therefore, we can say X is equal to 150 degrees. Y, opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. There you go. Okay, so what might look very scary at the beginning can actually be broken down into something very doable. And what I'd really seriously suggest you do, and I've mentioned this before, is to use highlighters or pencil crayons that to draw over your pictures. Guys, you guys get a sheet with all the diagrams on it as well as the question paper. So you can either do your coloring in on the question paper diagram or on this diagram sheet. It doesn't matter, they're not gonna mark you down for coloring it in like this. I mean, obviously, if you're gonna start drawing faces on it, then they will mark you down. But they're not gonna mark you down for drawing like I've done here with all the colors so that you can see what's going on, okay? And that, because all they do is read this. This is for your use. Okay, so please feel free to do something along the lines of this if this is going to help you to solve these problems. Right, let's go on to tangent concepts. So tangent is a line that just touches a graph at one point and only one point. So this year, BC is a tangent because it just touches the circle. And the first tangent concept that you need to learn is that the angle between the diameter and the radius is always 90 degrees, or between the diameter and the radius and the tangent is always 90 degrees. In other words, they're perpendicular to each other. Okay, so that is the first one you have to learn. Now that we have to talk about the tan chord theorem, the tan chord theorem. Now the tan chord theorem is quite tricky because there are two different ways that we can actually prove it. But first, I want to tell you what the tan chord theorem is, and then we're going to go through very slowly through both proofs. And you need to know both proofs very well. Okay, so the tan chord theorem says that the angle between the tangent and the CD is the tangent, and the chord to the circle is equal to the angle subtended by the chord at the circumference. Okay? in the alternate segment, okay? The angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the 
angle subtended by that chord at the circumference in the alternate segment. In other words, if you've got a tangent and makes an angle with a chord, if we then take those two points from that chord and you see another angle that it subtends, then that is equal to x. So if I drew another two lines here and I called this f, this would be also be x, right? Because it's subtended by bc. If I drew another two here, this would also be x. And if I drew another two here, this would be x. However, however, if I drew a line here, that does not equal x. That there does not equal x at all. Not x. Okay, so that's what they mean by alternate segment. And this is very important because this tan chord theorem is used lots and lots and lots. Okay. So there is also exactly the tan chord theorem, but in this case, it is an obtuse angle. Here is your x and there is your x. And this is the tangent and there's the chord and there's the angle that it makes, okay? So it works whether it is an acute angle or a reflex angle. So what I want to do now is I want to prove the tan chord theorem to you, and we're going to do it for both, okay? And this is actually very important proof. They love to ask this proof. So we're going to go through it nice and slowly, and I'm going to do W. So as always, you write what you are given. So we are given Okay, we are given a t, which is a tangent to the circle at a. You need to tell them where it joins. And we have chord a b. Chord a b subtending. point C. So chord AB is making angle C. That's what we've been given, right? So we need to prove, required to prove, that angle TAB, angle TAB, sorry, is equal to angle ACB. ACB. That's what we're trying to prove. Okay. So, we need to draw a construction because we can't do anything without a construction. So, we need to draw a construction. And our construction is in two parts. The first thing that we need to do is draw the diameter going up from the point where the tangent is meeting. Why? Because we know that that's going to be 90 degrees. Do you agree? Remember that that's one of the theorem that we know, the very first theorem on tan chord theorems, I mean tan theorems that we know, is that this is going to be 90 degrees. So we need to draw this going through the center of the circle, and let's just label it E. Okay. So we need to draw diameter A. E, right? And then we need to join, we need to join CE. We need to join CE. Okay. Right. Now, what we are doing is we're using two things. We're using the angle in the semicircle rule, and we are using the fact that a tangent and the diameter of a circle are always 90 degrees to each other. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, and I'm going to write this in a different color so that you can see what I'm doing. So let's go to dark red. So the proof. We know that angle EAT, okay, angle EAT is 90 degrees. Okay, we know that that is 90 degrees. Why? That's because this is the angle between the tangent and the chord. No, and the diameter. Sorry. T 
tangent and the diameter. So that's 90 degrees. Do you agree? We also know that angle ECA, angle ECA is 90 degrees. Why? Because angle in a semicircle. So this is 90 degrees. Okay. Right, now, remember what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that this little angle here is equal to this little angle here, or to make it easier, that this angle here is equal to this angle here. So we need to let something equal x. And what I'm going to let equal x is angle EAB. So I'm going to let, and remember that I don't have space to write here, so I'm going to write over here, but you guys are always going to write below each other, okay? So we're going to let angle E A B equal X, okay? So this is X, right? Now, if you look carefully, you can see that E A B is subtended by E B. I'm just going to change colors so you can see what I'm doing. So X is subtended by E B, right? But are there any other angles also subtended by EB? So if you take your fingers and you take them along, so you go along both of these, and you get to this point, and you say, is there any other angle that these two points are making on the circumference? Well, if I take my line down here and this line across, do you see that this angle here is also being made by EB? So therefore, we can say that that's X. So we can say, therefore, angle ECB, angle ECB is equal to X. Okay. Right. Great. And why is that? That's because they are angles in the same segment. Angles in same segment segment that's one way to write it the other way to write it is angles subtended by same arc okay either way of those reasons either either of those reasons is correct okay so what does that tell us now we've got that this whole angle there is 90 and this little angle is x Okay, so what can we say about this big angle that we want? Well, that's pretty easy. That is just the difference between those two. So we can say, okay, fine, angle BCA or ACB, angle ACB is equal to the whole of angle ACE minus angle BCE, BCE, which is equal to 90 degrees minus X. So this little bit here is 90 degrees minus X. Okay, so now we finally have a number for this angle here. Now let's see if we go back here, if we can find a number for this. Well, if we look carefully, we can see that the whole of EAT is 90, right? But this little bit here, EAB is X, so therefore we can get this angle TAB. So we can say angle TAB is equal to the whole of it, which is angle EAT, okay, minus this little bit here, which is angle EAB, which is 90 degrees minus X. Therefore, we can say that these two are equal. We can say angle TAB is equal to angle ACB. And we're done. Okay, sure. So that was quite a long theorem. Do you agree? Now, you need to be careful when you're going through this theorem. You need to be very careful that you are actually doing your constructions correctly, that you show that it's going through the center of the circle. You go all the way up to the circumference and drop it down. Okay, please guys, when you're drawing constructions, you need to again be using rulers 
and pencil, and if you make a mistake, erases. There is nothing worse for a teacher. Actually, there's quite a few things that are worse, but there's nothing worse. And say, for example, you were drawing this, and let's say you constructed and you went skew, but you did it in pen. So what you did was you cross it out, and then you do straight up again. That's terrible. That's horrible. Please don't do that, okay? You need to be drawing these things in pencil, using a ruler, and using erasers to erase anything you're doing incorrectly, okay? And then you obviously draw your constructions here. And again, feel free to do this in different colors. This should all be one color, and it should be ink, okay? Obviously, I've done it in different colors, so you can see what I am doing. But all of your stuff should be written one under the other, nice and neatly, and it should be all in the same color. And another thing, please make sure that your writing is legible. I'm going to say this, um, I have said it a couple of times already, but please remember that the people that are marking your exams at the end of the year, okay, are just, firstly, they're just human. Secondly, they are there, although they're there to do the best job they can, they are marking for a minimum of eight hours a day. Okay, and it doesn't matter whether they're marking for the IB or for the government or whoever they're marking, there is kind of a stipulation that you need to mark a certain number of exam papers in a certain amount of time, okay? And so what happens is that the markers will mark to their best of the ability for as long as possible in a day. So when it possibly might happen that your exam falls in front of a marker, who has been marking for eight hours for that day and they come across your exam paper. Now, if you've written untidily, okay, and you make it difficult for that marker to find the marks for you, then you're making his job much more difficult. And whether he's a nice person or not, he might not be able to spend the time and he might not have the energy, to, he or she, have the energy to look for the marks for you. Okay, now you don't have to stress because 90% of the time that there are, well, all the time there are second markers that will go along and check it and everything else, but you need to make it as easy as possible to get the marks that you have, that you deserve. Guys, if you're not through, get the marks by writing neatly. It just makes sense, okay? Right, let's move on to the second part of this proof. So when I say second part, it's a second version. You need to be able to do the obtuse case as well, okay? You need to be able to do the obtuse case. So we're going to go through this just as carefully because of the fact that they like to ask this one more than they like to ask the cute one. And the cute one, as far as I'm concerned, is slightly easier to do. Okay, so again, you have a tangent, okay? You have a circle, you've got your chord, and you've got your point on the circle. So you again need to, if they haven't given it to you, you need to write given. And you're given tangent CD, okay, to the circle at C, at C, right? And then you've got chord AC, chord AC, which subtends point B. Okay, so you just turn them what you have. And again, you're going to do exactly the same constructions. Construction. Okay, so you are going to draw the diameter going through the center of the circle. In this case, I happen to have put the O there to help you. Okay. And then you are going to join the angle B, in this case, with the. So we're going to call this point here E. Okay. So the construction is going to be diameter CD and chord or line, but we'll call it a chord, um, chord EB. Okay, right, so now what do we know? And I'm just changing color again just to make it easy for you guys to understand. We know that angle ECD is 90 degrees, so we know proof. 
okay that angle ECD ECD is equal to 90 degrees why because it's the angle between the tangent the angle between the tangent and you can either write radius or you can write diameter. Now, don't go around writing both. You can write either or, okay? So that's 90 degrees. We also know that angle EBC, angle EBC equals 90 degrees. Why? Angle in a semicircle. Right. So that's 90 degrees, right? Now, what are we trying to prove again? Let's just do this in a different color so you can see what we're trying to prove. Required to prove, and let's just do this in black. We are required to prove that this bit here, the whole of ACD, is equal to the whole of ABC. So, required to prove that the whole of ABC is equal to ACD. D. So that's just where we're going. Okay. Right. So do you agree now this time we also want to use X, but this time X is going to be on the outside of the 90 degrees. Okay. So again, I'm just changing color so we can see what we're doing. And I'm changing to blue. This blue. Back to this blue. So I'm going to let this be X. Okay. So I'm going to let E C A E C A equal X. Okay. Do you agree therefore therefore that angle A C D A C D is 90 plus X degrees? Okay, just because we've said so, right? Now, if we look here at X, we can see it is oh I have to change color again. I'm sorry guys. Um, we can see that X is subtended by A and it's subtended by C. Now, if we we're looking for any other angles that were subtended by A and E, you could take your fingers down to this point and this point here, and you can see that that is also being subtended by AE. So this little angle here, ABE is equal to X. So we can say therefore angle ABX, oh sorry, ABE is equal to XY and it is either you could say angles in same segment or you could write angles subtended by same arc okay right and then you therefore have that a b c angle a b c equals 90 degrees plus x therefore angle a b c is equal to angle a c d Ta -da! we have proven it there you go. So that is the next proof that you guys need to know off by heart, really well, including the constructions. Right, so what we will do tomorrow is we are going to be using these two proofs as well as the fact that the tangent makes an angle of 90 degrees with the diameter in a whole bunch of other examples before we move on to the next theorem. Have a great day.